Welcome to PowerPoint VBA for all things PowerPoint. If you want to test out your student's arithmetic ability, instead of going and making hundreds of slides, you can just have one single slide and I'll teach you how to randomly generate questions and how to keep track of how many answers your student gets correct. In the first line, I am going to type multiplication quiz game generator. I'm going to delete this subtitle and I'm going to place a start game box. I'll keep a rectangle and I'll type start game. Now I'll open up a new slide and I'll delete these two placeholders. And now I want to have a good background which represents mathematics. So I'm going to go to the slide master under view slide master and I'm going to create a new layout. So just right click here and choose insert layout. I'll delete all these placeholders and I found an amazing background from freepick.com. So just take this image which you have downloaded and put it inside our PowerPoint slide layout. Now I want to hide this text, Max Cartoon Background. So I'll go to Home and insert a rectangle over the shape. In Shape Fill, I'm going to use the Eye Glopal effect and choose the green color. And in Shape Outline, I'm going to remove the outline. Now I'm going to go to Slide Master and close my master view. Now right click in your slide number two and under layout, choose the custom layout which we just created. Now right click again, go to format background and we can change the background color from white to this green color. Click on the color and choose the green color which we had already selected. Now we need to make our question. So choose a text box and let's type here. For example, what is 4 into 5. You can change the font of the text, you can reposition this and we are done. Select the shape, go to format and click on selection pane. This will allow us to change the name of the shape. I'm going to double click here and change the name of this text box to capital Q, which is going to represent the question. Now I'm going to go to the developer tab. If this is not enabled, just right click here Click on Customize the Ribbon and you can check mark the Developer tab and then click on OK. Cool. Now go to the Developer tab and we are going to use a text box. So select this ActiveX text box and place it over here. Now you can select the ActiveX element, go to its properties and we are going to change the name to A which stands for answer. Now I'm going to go to the font and I'm going to change the size to say 28. We can just type something in the value here in this and just see how it looks. If I type 33, it looks like this. We can increase the size even more. Just go to font, click on these three dots and we can change the size to 36 and that works out great. So you can remove the value and just leave it blank. Now we have finished making our text box. What this does is, when you go to the slideshow, you can type whatever number you want in this. Now I'm going to choose a rectangle shape and I'm going to draw it over here. This will make us go to the next question and check whether the answer is correct or wrong. Basically, it's like a submit button. Now we have designed our slide, we have the question, we have the answer, we have the submit answer button. So just double click on your text box here and you will open the Visual Basic application panel. In this, it is time to type our code. You can download all the codes from my website or you can learn how I do this. First, I'm going to make a subroutine for generating question. So generate Q. I need to first identify what shape is going to contain the question. So I'm going to write dim question shape as shape set question shape equal to active presentation dot slides to shapes the name of the shape is Q and now this is our shape so Q shape is going to refer to our shape so now we need to set the range of our questions in L1 and L2. So L1 will be the lowest number which will come while playing the game and L2 will be the highest number which I'm going to keep as 15. Great. Now we need to generate 
two random numbers between L1 and L2. Here I type Q1 equal L2 minus L1 plus 1 into R&D plus L1. This is the formula to generate a random number between 3 to 15, which is between L1 and L2. We can see this in action by having a message box, which will give us Q1. So if I click on play, you can see it gives me 9.91. I do not want any of those decimals. So I'm going to add the integer function here. I'm going to put the entire formula within brackets. Now if I play the subroutine one more time, it shows me 11. If I play it once more, it shows me 13. So that means our random number is being generated. Now I'm going to remove this Q1. I'm going to copy this Q1 formula and I'm going to put that under question. Now we have generated two random numbers. Now we need to insert these two randomly generated numbers within the question box. So I'll just type here as a comment, uh, insert random number in question. So to do this, we are going to type qshape.textframe.textrange equals what is, because this is a string, you need to put that under double quotes. Then we can put an and and refer to Q1, put and again, open your double brackets, type X here, which uh, refers to multiplication, and again, and Q2, and we are done. Let me play the subroutine and you can see what happens. As you can see, a new question got generated. There has to be a space between what is and nine. So click here and add a space. Now let us play the subroutine one more time. As you can see, the questions are being generated properly. You can reduce the size of this text box because the questions are being missed. Just reposition all of this and we are good to go. I click on play and everything works perfectly. So now we have completed generating questions. Now we need to go and see how we can evaluate the question. Now we are going to declare Q1 and Q2 as public integers so that it can be used in multiple subroutines. So dim q1 as integers, I'm going to type this at the top because it comes under declarations. This comes under the generate q subroutine, but I want this to be declared in the declaration so that it can be used in multiple subroutines. So dim q2 as integer. Now we are going to have one more subroutine and this will be to say check a, which will be check answer. So here I'm going to type an if condition, if what is written inside this attempted answer, which can be referred to as if a dot value equal q1 multiplied by q2, then what should happen? We'll just type that later on and if. And after the check a answer is present, a dot value should become blank. So what should happen if the answer is correct? We are going to have a scoreboard here. So I'm just going to choose one rectangle and I'm going to draw it here. And the name of this rectangle is going to be CA, which stands for correct answer. Change the color and we are good to go. I'll press control on my keyboard and drag one more box here. And this is going to be WA, which stands for wrong answer. I'm going to just type some random number here and I'm going to increase the size. So this is going to hold the number of correct answer. Let me just type here. I'll press control on my keyboard and I'll just drag the text box one more time. And this will be the number of long answers. Now, if the answer is correct, the correct answer value must increase by one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this dim Q shape code and I'm going to type it here. And instead of Q shape, I'm going to put C A shape, C A shape, and that is going to refer to C A, which is in slide number two. So C A shape equal C A shape plus one. Now the C A shape is going to be converted into an integer. But now if the answer is not correct, we need to increase the W A shape. So I'll just copy this here and instead of CA, I'll type WA shape. Now I'm going to copy these two lines of code and instead of CA shape, I'm going to type here WA shape. So here I type CA shape, 
we are referring to shape text frame dot text range, not the shape, but the text within the shape. So just type it here. I'll copy this line of code and I'll paste it for wa shape also, and within the integer also. Yes. Now we have finished making the check a subroutine. Now we need to make one sub initialize, and this subroutine is basically going to clear all the values. So in the beginning, I want to clear the value of a. So I'll just copy this and paste it here. I want to clear the value of CA and WA. So I'll just copy this line of code, paste it here instead of these if functions. So I'll just put CA shape text frame will be zero and WA text frame dot text range will also be zero. But we can't just type CA shape because the code does not know what is the CA shape. We have not declared it in our subroutine. So we can just declare it publicly and it can be used in two subroutines. So I'll just copy this and paste it here. Copy this and paste it here. So now we have declared CA shape and WA shape publicly. But the thing is, even if we play initialize in the beginning, we do not know what is CA shape because we have not come to this subroutine. So I'm just going to cut these two things and I'm going to declare that in initialize itself. I'm going to set the values of CA shape and WA shape immediately. So now we will know what we are leveling to. So now let us make one more subroutine called sub start game and that is going to run initialize and also generate the question and we are going to go to the next slide when we click on start game. To do that, slideshow windows, one, view, next. So when we run the subroutine, we are going to initialize, generate the question and go to the next slide. And how is that going to happen? Just go to our presentation and we need to run the macro start game when we click on start game. So click on start game, click on insert, click on action and run the macro and run the macro start game. Now go to slide number two, select this shape and this has to run the macro slide to check A. Click on OK. Now go to slide number one and go to slide show mode and click on start game. As you can see, this got reset. What is full into three? 12. I click here. It shows correct answer one. 12. I also need to generate one more question when I click on this shape. So let us do that. So in check A, after we have done all of this, we need to generate a question. So just copy generate Q and paste it after this. Perfect. Now if I play the game one more time, start game 7 into 5, 35, 9 into 4, 36, 10 into 3, 30. Let me get one answer long. If I put here 120 and click here, it shows answer is long. So this is how we make a quick multiplication game in PowerPoint. So after you have completed making the game, you need to start saving it. But now we won't save it as a normal PowerPoint, but we need to save it as a .pptm file, a PowerPoint macro enabled presentation. Choose your location and just click on save. And now I'm going to show you something amazing. I took this concept and I increased it to a full fleshed game. Here you can choose your time limit, say 30 seconds, and you can choose the minimum and maximum number of range from which the questions have to be asked. Say I keep 2 to 15. Now all my multiplication questions will be asked from 2 to 15. So these are some amazing animations and designs. Now let me start the game. And the game starts. What is 13 into 3? That is 39. I type it. I click on enter. 6 4 are 20. 4, 14, 20. And you can see if I get my answer slide, it shows you're doing a fantastic job. You are smart. So I can just type the answers to the best of my knowledge and click on enter. I made a mistake there. Let me just wait for the time to get over. And we are going to see an Excel analysis. It shows collect 9, long 1. Now it will ask us to save an Excel sheet. This Excel sheet analysis is top class. Let me just show you how it looks. You can see my percentage, the seconds, the number of collect and long answers, the questions which will generated, my answer and the actual collect answer and my favorite thing is the time. It shows the time that it took for you to write the answer. 
So if you like this and you would want to get hold of this file, go to my website. This file will be available. The link is in the description. You can download it from my website. Thank you very much. Have a great day. If you like the video, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button and I shall see you in my next video.